I'm going to ask you to stay through the end of this video. It won't be very long, but I can promise you that this will change your life. Most importantly, this is vital information that most of you or a lot of people don't know. And a lot of people don't know the timing of this. What I'm talking about is called the rapture, the rapture of the church, also known as the bride of Christ. Now, stop for a second because perhaps you've heard of this term before, and I did as well. But until very recently, I think there's been some important, critical new, let's call them discoveries or revelations with regarding to the timing and what possibly can happen. And I'm gonna absolutely promise you that this can take place within the next few weeks, months, a few years the most. So I'm absolutely begging you to please watch this video until the end. Try to understand the point that I'm making and consider how that will transform your life. So the rapture really comes from the original Greek language harpazo or from the Latin rapio. It means the being removed from, snatched from, taking away from. And what it's referring to is the taking away of the believers of the church, the body of Christ from the earth before the period called the tribulation begins. Now, there are several theories, or let's say readings of what scripture says with regards to this particular event. Some believe that this will happen prior to the tribulation. Some believe that it will happen during the tribulation. And other people believe it won't truly happen in that it will be an event that happens at the end of the tribulation with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now let's go ahead and read from 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So what we're talking about here is an event where the Lord Jesus Christ himself will come down and the dead in Christ, that part of the body of Christ, which is made by people who died before this particular event, will rise out of the graves and begin to lift up in the air with a renewed body and meet the Lord. And then those who are still alive at that time will also be raptured, taken, snatched out of the earth and lifted up in the air to meet both the ones that raised, um, raised from the dead as well as the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. And here is another scripture. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. So again, is a reference to this event where not everybody will fall asleep as in physical death and the waiting of the Lord to come back, but some will still be alive when this moment happens. Now, the most important question to understand is if this event were to happen during the tribulation or after tribulation, we would say that it is a time of war, famine, pestilence, disaster, a total terrible time like never seen before on earth. And so the people who are expecting this event to happen would be found through some form of turmoil, some form of difficulty and high level of stress. And this perhaps should be conveyed throughout scripture. And while there are some ways to see that, let me read you another scripture that might tell us something different. This is Matthew 24, verse 38. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came, and took them away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. 
one will be taken and the other one left. Two women will be grinding at the meal, one will be taken and the other left. This event, this particular scripture, which is the Lord Jesus speaking, tells us that this event of being snatched away, taken, is represented at a time where things are relatively peaceful. So the one thing we see here is it is a semi-peaceful time, but also not everybody's taken. In fact, there's a selection between one person being left behind and one person taken. This is a very important consideration and something that should start to grab your attention because we're going to go exactly into the core of this particular teaching. So now let me read to you from the Gospel of Luke 21 verse 34. But take heed to yourself, lest your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy of the escape. So in this particular case, Jesus is very clear. He says, this is a moment that will come without you knowing. And yet we know because he's told us in the same chapters of Matthew 22 through 24, that a great tribulation is coming, a time where everybody will be substantially killed, if not scattered throughout the earth. It'll be a terrible time of destruction, famine, and difficulty. So why would we mention then that this escape, worthy of the escape, would happen at a time where we're not expecting it? In fact, we want to begin to consider that the idea is that there are two events happening. One is the snatching away, we call it the rapture, and should likely happen prior to the Great Tribulation. The last one will be the second coming of the Lord Jesus, which happens at the end of the Tribulation. Don't forget that the Lord always talks to us throughout the Scripture. When He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, He means it's the beginning and the end. When an event such as the Tribulation it would also make sense for the Lord to be the beginning and the end of that as well. So to begin to make a little bit of clarity, life as is at this time where I'm making this video is as it was 100 years ago, 200 years ago, up to about 2,000 years ago when Jesus was walking the earth. And therefore, we call this the time of grace. It is a time where you can repent and embrace the Lord Give your life to the Lord Jesus under the premise of grace, which is based on faith. In that you do not see the Lord with your physical eyes, but you have a connection with Him through the Holy Spirit. And therefore, you can have a walk, an actual walk with Him, which is a spiritual walk. But it is a manifest in a physical way, especially through the repercussions, sometimes called as works, into your life. Those works, as we spoke about it in other videos, it, they are not the source or the reason for which you'll be saved, but they, have, they are the evidence of your salvation. So under the time of grace, this is still very possible. It's to give your life to Christ who gave your life, his life for you. Now, after the rapture, which is when the Lord Jesus will come and take those believers who are ready to be with him, who have been preparing and waiting and praying and watching, they'll be taken out of the earth. And at that time, the tribulation will start. This is a time, as we said before, of terrible events, tremendous difficulty, something that we cannot even fathom. Now, this time is scheduled to be seven years, but there are some recent studies that think it might be longer. But assuming it is seven years, then at that end of that time, whoever is left will then be meeting the second Christ coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which will be a time of judgment. And then that will begin the final 1,000 years on earth called the millennium. Now, wouldn't it be important to know at least 
around what time this could happen. Surely it is said in the Gospels that only the Father knows the time and the hour. Although that's actually only in two of the Gospels out of three, not in the Gospel of Luke. Which also brings me to a point that perhaps I'll discuss in a different video, which is why do we have three plus one Gospels? But let's set that aside for a second. However, when the time comes, when the time comes, the idea will be to be ready. And so having a general knowledge on when that could be, whether it is in a few weeks from this video, in a few months, in a few years, or in a very long time, it would certainly make some kind of difference. But let me tell you something. If this event doesn't happen, which is the rapture, but you will regretfully die due to a car accident or some other um, not wishable event, wouldn't you want to know this information anyways? Wouldn't you want to know that without having embraced the Lord Jesus Christ, your salvation is not there? And therefore, even more of a reason to pay attention. Why? Because it could be the rapture, but it could be just another uh, way to, to depart this earth. So when we go into the timeline, I'm not going to bring up the overall biblical timeline from creation to today. This is a topic for a different video. But I'm going to bring up one aspect of the Gospel of Matthew where the Lord Jesus gives us some understanding of how to be prepared and know approximately when this event called the rapture and tribulation to follow could happen. So let's read from Matthew 24, verse 32. The Lord Jesus says, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. As surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So what is the generation that Jesus is speaking about? When he says this generation, and he talks about the fig tree coming to uh, bearing fruit, the generation that the Lord was in ended in the year 70 AD when Rome destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. And therefore, those events did not happen. So we are confident in saying that it wasn't that generation, but it was the generation immediately after. And perhaps we can say that that could be a bookend again scenario where the Lord left that generation and then returned into this particular generation and then closes up one more time. But it is fairly accepted the theory that the generation we're talking about begins when Israel becomes a nation again after the year 70 AD. And this happens on May 14, 1948 at midnight. So the next step is to understand how long is a generation. Because if it did start in 1948, we will want to know how long is a generation. Well, let's go to Psalm 90 verse 10. And it says, the days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reasons of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. This is a very interesting psalm. And in fact, I might be doing a separate video on this. And I encourage you to go and read it all. It seems like Moses is talking exactly at this particular you know event and so let's look at this carefully we're looking at the 70 year to 80 year period but 70 is a very critical number seven years tribulation and here is 70 years so when we look at that from 1948 we can say that 70 plus 1948 will take us to 2018 so perhaps the idea is that it's up to an 80 generation, which will shoot us to 2028. So between 18 and 28, perhaps this is when it will happen. But let's look at another verse. 
We're going to go to Leviticus 19, verse 23. When you come into the land and have planted all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as uncircumcised. Three years it shall be as uncircumcised to you. You shall not be eaten. But in the fourth year, all its fruit shall be holy and praise to the Lord. And in the fifth year, you may eat its fruit that it might yield to you its increase. So this is a verse that was brought up by an interesting ministry called Ministry Revealed. I'll leave the, the link below in the description. And I highly recommend you watch their teachings. They are saying here that we can add this particular verse to the generation of the 70 years verse, saying that it's true that you have taken possession of the land in 1948. We're talking about Israel. But the first four years don't truly count because the first three years are not to be touched, so to say, and the fourth year belongs to the Lord. So from the fifth year on, you can begin to take possession of the land. So if we start counting 1948 plus the four years where we have to wait, we're going to get to 1952. At that second, the count starts and adding 70 from 1952 shoots us to May 14, 2022. Now, let's add a second piece to this. Now, we know that the Lord speaks in the Word, which is the full scripture, Old Testament and New Testament. And every aspect and element of the Word is both a present, past, and future event. Now, a lot of people don't understand or see this, but we could make a whole teaching just to point that out, which is the same Word, which is the Lord Jesus, connects us into the past, present, and future events. So let's see what he says in Hosea 6, verse 2. And he says, After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up. Now, let me show you another verse where we understand what the days mean. Psalms 90 again, and verse 4. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them like a flood. And we can even go to 2 Peter 3, verse 8, where it says, But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So we just learned in Isaiah that he will return after two years. But two, two days, sorry. But two days really mean two thousand years. And on the third day, after another thousand years, so after 3,000 years, we will be um, back with them. In other words, there will be the final judgment. So now we see an important piece that says the Lord Jesus will return after 2,000 years. Then something will happen, and we'll have one more thousand years at the end of which there will be the final judgment. So now, if we can go back and calculate when the Lord Jesus left, we could calculate 2,000 years and add them up to see where we're standing. So now we have documentations that point us in the direction of the year 29 AD as the year of the crucifixion and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. One of them is the Shroud of Turin, which has been detected and labeled through historic um, carbon-based counting as dating back to the year 29 AD. Now, if that's the case, and we add 2,000 years to that, we will come to the year 2029. Now, if we subtract to that seven years of tribulation, assuming that the second coming is what we're talking about, so 2029 minus seven, gives us again 2022. There is many other reasons to believe that 2022 is an extremely important year. One is a jubilee year, and you can Google that as well. And the second is that right around the anniversary 
of Israel turning actually 70, which is May 14. On May 15, there will be a blood moon, which appears to be in the same configuration as the revelation sign of the Virgin with the sun and the blood moon and the dragon. So this happens on May 15. May 14th, Israel turns 70 when we count the four years of the Leviticus. And we're really just demonstrating that it's very likely that the timeline of the Lord's return will be in 2029, making 2022 right around the mid-May time an incredibly important time for what could be and will be the life-changing event for entire mankind. So let me ask you a question. If the Lord does come back sometimes this year, and what if it is actually just in a few weeks? Remember, nobody knows the time or the hour. We're not saying that we know that either. But it's really bringing us to the point of asking, are we ready? Are you ready? What if he comes and you're left behind? This would be a terrible thing to happen, unless the Lord has a particular plan for you, which we're not going to discard. But in the vast majority of cases, we're going to have to really be certain that is either an event we don't agree with, we don't believe in, or we didn't know about. What we do know is if it does happen, which it will, except we don't know the exact timing, but I just demonstrate to, do, to you that it could be very soon. Are you ready to be with the Lord? Will you be facing his judgment after that and going through the tribulation? And bear in mind, being converted and giving your full life to Christ after the rapture, during the tribulation, is not going to be an easy task. It's going to be filled with difficulties, temptations, and desperations. This is the time of grace. This is the time where you want to repent, look into the Lord, and give your life to Him. But let's say, are you ready? Let me show to you what the Lord means by being ready. In 2 Peter 3, verse 14, it says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by Him in peace, without spot, and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. And also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. So it is saying, we have to be vigilant. We have to be prepared. We don't know the time, although we are beginning to see the possibility of it being very close. And we must be ready regardless whether we go to the rapture or by natural death. We must be prepared to meet the Lord. And that means examining yourself deeply. Are you in idolatry following certain religions? Are you still connected to the world? Where is more important than the Lord? Are you lost in sin and repeating the same patterns of destruction that you did before? Are you in unforgiveness? Have you not let go of grudges against people? Have you forgotten to pray and spend time in the Word of God, which is nutriment, according to Matthew 4.4 4 and Luke 4.4? 4. These are things that we need to ask ourselves right now. So the Lord teaches us the parable of the ten virgins. And let me read to you this part from Matthew 25, verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridge groom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. The story goes on telling that the five foolish virgins did not have enough oil to fill their lamps. And when the time came, they basically were caught unprepared. And so the Lord took the five wise virgins with him and they went into the wedding hall. The doors were shut. By the time the virgin, 
the foolish virgins who had asked the other five to borrow some oil and were rejected, went and looked for oil and came back. The doors were shut and they were cast away. The Lord said, I do not know you. The idea is that these other virgins knew that the wedding was coming. They knew that the master was coming. They had everything, including some oil, but not what was necessary to get to the wedding. We're not talking about somebody who did not know anything about a wedding, had no idea what they needed to bring, and certainly didn't understand that the lambs work with oil. They all understood that, except they were not prepared. What does that mean to you? It is often being said that the oil represents the Holy Spirit, and I am going to agree with that. The idea is that the Holy Spirit, which is God, fills us with knowledge, with wisdom, and with understanding. We fall to our knees in prayer constantly, multiple times during the day, bringing ourselves back to obedience to God. That's through the Word of God, through Scripture, not through the interpretation of man or the traditions of certain religions. We repent, which is a prerequisite to be in conversation, relationship with the Lord. We bring to Him our desire to be a vessel for Him to do what is necessary. And part of our mandate on this earth is to share, like I'm doing with you, the good news. The good news is that there's still time. Now, I don't know if it's going to be May 14, 15, 16, later this year, next year, or in the future. But what I know is I could die tomorrow. And by the time this video is done, maybe I'm not around anymore. But I also hope that you watched all the way until this point. You do need to repent. You do need to be baptized in water, not sprinkle water when you were a child. You need to give your life to Christ, which means many things and can be covered in one short video. But it really means to understand that everything we have done on this earth prior to our salvation, which means to be born again, it's most likely not in line with what the Lord does. And most importantly, there's no way for us to purchase our own salvation through our good deeds. But salvation only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ, who washed us with his blood on the cross. And through that one-time sacrifice, we're now justified before the Holy Father, which is the Father we have in heaven. Now, without that, there is no entrance into the kingdom of God. I'm sorry to tell you that, but that is the truth. Nobody will enter without the Lord Jesus Christ. So repent now. Please let me know that this was helpful. You know where to reach me. I will leave a link to my Instagram account. You can send me a DM if you need to talk more about this. We are in our last days. And most importantly, each one of us has a deadline with death, which will come. It's time to repent. Embrace the Lord. Give your life to Him. Peace.